The ATX24 pin has been around since, well, the beginning of time. From the moment it grew up from a measly 20 pins, but there's a change coming and it may just affect you and your PC. Let's do this. <laughs> I wish these files would transfer faster. Come on! Whoa, is that the Fire Cuda 510 NVMe drive with its blistering fast speeds of 3450 megabytes a second read, 3200 megabytes a second write, and capacities of up to two terabyte? I can have these files transferred in no time. And if I'm looking for the ultimate performance, I could even get the fourth generation Fire Cuda 520. I better check the link in the description to find out more details. Back in 2019, there was talk of the standard changing and the word ATX12VO was passed about and then everything went fairly quiet. Until now, and with Intel's new Alder Lake CPUs on the horizon, there's been a bit more of a push for this new ATX12VO standard. And we may see it before the year is out. It all starts with Intel announcing that they wanted to push for a new power delivery system concerning PSUs and motherboards in their upcoming series. While this isn't, I guess, new news, it has been a bit quiet for a good while now. We originally posted an article on it over about a year ago, but it's just starting to gain some traction again. Looking like it may begin with Alder Lake S, Intel is set to push the ATX12VO standard with the new range of motherboards, which will also support DDR5 and new, not 14 nanometer processors, finally. Now, of course, if motherboard manufacturers are unwilling to get on board, Intel could be kind of shot out of the water before it even happens. And while I don't see that really being an issue, it'll be interesting to see what the differences are actually gonna be. So ATX12VO, I mean, what the hell is it? And does it even matter to me? Well, to start with, it will likely be used on lower end motherboards and those available to system integrators who make pre-built PCs. So most DIY users may not have to worry about it quite yet, yet. Also, just to put it out there, companies like Corsair are already working on adapters, so you can use your current PSU on the new motherboards. For system integrators, it's gonna allow for better power delivery and, wait for it, less wires coming from the PSU. So you may finally get some decent cable management on a pre-built system. Maybe. So what's the point of this new fangled connector? People don't like change, so it better be worth it. Well, the connector gets rid of the 3.3 volt, 5 volt, negative 12 volt, and 5 volt standby rails from the PSU and adds them directly onto the motherboard. This is to allow for a more efficient power delivery, especially when your system is idling, and if nothing else, will reduce the cables coming from your PSU, or at least the size of some of them. This should also mean that we have less components in our power supplies, hopefully making them cheaper to purchase because they're gonna be cheaper to actually manufacture. Hey, we can all dream, right? On the other hand, this could increase the price of the motherboard, so we may not actually see any benefit from a pricing point of view when looking at the full picture. Now, there are a couple of unique features that come along with all of this, which are, I guess, kind of cool. So as mentioned, some of the rails from the PSU will now be on the motherboard. But the thing I wanna see the most is the inclusion of the SATA power cables directly on the motherboard itself. Basically, there's a couple of small four pin power connectors on the motherboard somewhere up here that you can plug your SATA power cables directly into and then plug them into your drives. Kind of like daisy chaining, sort of. It's gonna be interesting to see just how this works and where motherboard manufacturers are gonna start placing these ports on their boards, especially without making it look like kind of spaghetti junction. So on one hand, it sounds like we'll be getting better cable management options due to less cables on the ATX12VO. And then on the other hand, it's like, haha, we put SATA power cables on the motherboard, so good luck hiding those. I mean, what in the actual f is that all about? They also talk about less cables from the PSU as they've now removed the 24 pin, like we have here, in place of a 10 pin connector. But on some motherboards, there's an extra six pin connector and at least two four pin connectors. So that's four different connectors. And if my mass is any good, 10 plus six plus four plus four, that still equals 24. Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three, quick maths. The only difference is they're all separate. So now kind of what's the point? What's really going on here? Now I'm not an engineer, though I do know my POS caps from my SP caps and knew that that whole saga was driver related, but I don't really think anyone thought this whole thing through, but I'm sure it'll be marketed as some kind of advantage to the consumer. 
To me, it seems like more of a pain in the ass than anything. So what does this mean to the average consumer? Well, with the way that things are looking, the new ATX 12VO standard may end up being more widely adopted this year, at least if Intel has its own way. It will likely start with system integrators and then move up the chain depending on the reception it gets and could maybe one day make its way to higher end DIY builds, but we're just going to have to wait and see if that happens. It's said to offer lower power consumption, especially when your PC is idling and it is said to reduce the wires, though I'm just I'm not quite seeing that myself as there still seems to be 24 wires just spread out over more connectors now. Whether it has a benefit or not, I don't know. I think we're just gonna have to wait and see. So yeah, I guess the big question is, will I need a new PSU or a new motherboard? I mean, I personally don't see this having a massive effect on the market anytime soon, but I guess it's definitely gonna be interesting to see how everything kind of pans out. I mean, with the current state of the market, you would hope that more companies would be focused on trying to bring their current products to the shelves so consumers can actually buy them and not trying to revamp things and trying to kind of reinvent the wheel too much. Though, if you are looking at moving to Alder Lake S when it does come out, then you'd have to buy a new CPU, a new motherboard and memory anyway. So with that, it's not really gonna make much of a difference. Let me know what you guys think by commenting below and you know, the usual. If you like this video, you know exactly what to do and I will see you in the next one. See you later guys, bye bye.